and moved by the honourable member for Melbourne be agreed to. And I call the leader of the opposition. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Well, last Thursday there at Dubbo was there with uh, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister. They had a whole gaggle of ministers there from the federal government. I stood up. There were hundreds of people there. Declared, declared. I offered Labor's support for this drought fund. I offered it. 500 people. They were all there. I said, we support it. We'll support it not just for 100 mil. We'll support it at any level you're prepared to put forward. We can bring it forward to the current financial year, not 12 months' time. It could be more than $100 million. We'd vote for it. That's what I declared in front of 500 people on live national TV. And ever since last Thursday, this mob over here have been campaigning for us to reverse that position right. and vote against the drought fund. Whose side are they on? The truth is that they are determined to play politics because they do not have an agenda for the future. They're scared of the present but terrified of the future, terrified of acting in the national interest. One of the things that I mentioned when I spoke to that drought summit, I used two words that the Prime Minister didn't use. Guess what they were? Climate change. Because you can't talk about drought in this country without also addressing the long-term impact of climate change, the need for mitigation, the need to make sure that we build resilience in our farms that we are as strong in this chamber as farmers are on their land. That is what we need in this country. And yet what we had from those opposite is a Prime Minister who went along to a drought summit and has offered, let's be very clear here, forget about $5 billion. There is nothing this financial year in this legislation. There is $100 million to be drawn down the following year and $100 million a year after that. So the total funding for drought relief to assist farmers to build resilience, to build infrastructure over this term of the 46th parliament is $200 million. This mob give that to mates over a cup of tea when they're getting out their various pork funds that they've established. This mob waste more than that before breakfast, $200 million. That's all they offered. Here's what I said, and I quote, don't play politics with this. It is too important. Just stop it. Provide funding with appropriations as you should and we'll back it. Any level you want, done. That's what I said. Without being given any notice or the courtesy of a discussion with the Prime Minister who stood up before that meeting and made this grand announcement, sorry, he did make another one as well, we're going to have a parliamentary committee. He did do that. But he didn't have anything to say about significant infrastructure funding. He had nothing to say about climate change. He had nothing to say about real assistance with regard to the people who are really doing it tough when it comes to farmers. And then he has the hide and the arrogance to think that he'll play wedge politics with this. What has he said this debate is about? Has he said it's about the need of the rural communities? Has he said it's about farmers? No, he has said it's about Labor. That is what he has said. And he has said, in fact, that every bill that he's introducing and debating before the parliament this week is about Labor. Well, I've got news for the Prime Minister. He won the election. He should start acting like the government instead of an opposition in exile, scared of governing, because that's the way he's behaving at the moment. The immaturity of the way that this debate has been conducted, whereby for the first time in 23 years that I have represented Grainler in this parliament, and I've been leader of the House, I've been manager of opposition business, I've dealt with the former member for Warringah and others who like to think of themselves as hard nuts, I've never seen anything like this, whereby 
They couldn't get their act together to get the legislation through that was announced in October, couldn't get it through the 45th parliament, couldn't be bothered even putting it to the Senate. They couldn't be bothered it being amongst the 26 pieces of legislation that were introduced in the last sitting week. But they come in here and they go, oh, I know, we've got a plan. We'll stop the Labor caucus getting a say in what happens. Well, congratulations. You've achieved that, because there'll be a vote tonight. There'll be a vote tonight, even though a minister went up there and said to me and the crossbenchers that the parliament would adjourn at 7.30, so that to allow proper processes. And then they say it's urgent. Not a cent flows before July 2020. I've never seen anything less urgent. What is urgent? is the needs of farmers, what isn't urgent is your response to that need. You have failed and you just underline that failure with your arrogance and your contempt for the proper processes of this parliament. I have respect for this parliament. I have never ever ratted on a deal that's been done across the chamber. If I give my word, that is it. Cross benches, the other side, the relationship I have with the former member for Sturt, and some might criticise that. But at the end of the day, if you behave like this, it catches up with you. It catches up with you. The arrogance writ large of a government in search of an agenda, of a prime minister who thinks that the Australian people all think everything he says is OK, that it's a free-for-all. I say to the cross benches, think again next time they give you a commitment, next time they tell you during a debate. This wasn't a commitment a few hours ago. They couldn't last half an hour from when they said it would happen. And that's why the position of the government is quite frankly untenable. And what's the objective here? We said we'd support the drought fund and we will. But what we are disappointed with is the effort that the government's gone to, to abolish the Building Australia Fund. Because the Building Australia Fund assists people in regional Australia to get goods to market. They make our roads safer. The Pacific Highway will have less deaths as a result of the Building Australia Fund, as a result of that. And the fact is, that they don't like transparency. They just want the National Party ministers to decide whatever happens with money. They don't want Infrastructure Australia. And when you set up Infrastructure Australia, you have to have a fund to fund projects that have been assessed by, including water infrastructure projects. But as a result of this, they'll get rid of the Building Australia Fund. They also want to get rid of the Education Investment Fund as well. They hate transparency and they hate accountability. And that's really what this is about. This is the fourth time they've linked the abolition of the BAF to legislation. The worst, perhaps, was linking it to the National Disability Insurance Scheme. That was urgent too. So one of the ministers speak, spoke about going low in this debate. That's going low. That's going low. So if you support the Building Australia Fund, you don't support people with disabilities. How low is that? If you support the Building Australia Fund or you support drought funding. How pathetic. How pathetic. So you take here's some mass, even for the National Party, even, even for Barnaby should be able to work this out. Okay? So you got you got two hundred million dollars you're gonna get this term for drought funding. But you're removing $3.9 billion from the Building Australia Fund. Now, now, you don't even have to count all the zeros to know that $3.9 billion out and $200 million in is a pretty bad deal. Even the member for New England should be able to understand that. But as a result, as a result of this, as a result of this, what we will be doing as a Labor Party is ensuring 
as I declared last Thursday in front of 500 people, that we won't oppose this legislation because we support the drought fund. That is what we will do. This man was Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> you cheapened the currency, sunshine, I'll tell you that. So, in terms of... You gotta, you, you gotta, you, you gotta worry. You gotta, you gotta worry when, uh, when you can't make the National Party front bench. <laughs> so, in terms of, in terms of the Parliament, we will not be opposing the drought fund. We will be in government once again committed to restructuring Infrastructure Australia and making it a strong body once again by having a genuinely independent board of experts, yeah. by making sure that it can do its job in driving microeconomic reform and having proper cost-benefit analysis and rigour in terms of infrastructure. We will establish in the future a fund like the Building Australia Fund, because we think that is essential that there be a funding component. <laughs> so those opposite, once again, show tonight that they're the wreckers. When they talk about genuine economic reform, imagine them sitting around, going, they're in their third term, and they're struggling for what are the big reforms that they've done. Yes, they got rid of a climate change policy that we had, but they haven't got one for themselves back. On economic policy, yes. There are some tax cuts have got through, but no tax reform. No tax reform. Tax reform is what the Hawke and Keating government did. John Howard's government, to be fair, did some tax reform. What they've done is some tax cuts, which is very different from economic reform. On the skills agenda, what have they done? Nothing whatsoever. We've seen a decline in Australia's position. Our engagement with the world, where are we? We're an embarrassment on so many of the indicators that are there. When it comes to uh, action on the drought and water policy, of course we have in this country an absolute crisis going on in the Murray-Darling Basin. And this government <coughs> thinks that a bill with $100 million 12 months from now is all that they need to do. When it comes to uh, the forward-looking agenda, they simply don't have one. They have arrogance, they have hubris, they don't have an agenda, which is why they try to define everything as being about us. When we raised today in the first question of parliament uh, the Prime Minister's comments about the fact that we've supported uh, the uh, unanimous recommendations of the Joint Committee uh, that looks at national security issues. Uh, the Prime Minister dismissed that again. Again, all politics. What Australians have is conflict fatigue. They're looking for solutions, not arguments. This is a government that's obsessed by arguments, obsessed by arguments with itself. That's why they're unable to actually move forward with a forward-looking agenda. We on this side will continue to hold the government to account. But we will also be developing a forward-looking agenda to meet the challenges, the challenges which are there going forward as a nation. One of those is drought. You can't deal with that without dealing with climate change. You can't deal with, with that without having sound environmental policy. You can't deal with that either without having rigour and transparency around funding mechanisms. This bill has been improved by the, from the original bill because of the amendments that were moved by the former member for Indi. That's why you have proper parliamentary procedure, so that you actually have analysis and you improve legislation. That's why this government's position in ramming this through uh, tonight without proper scrutiny and debate is such an outrage. But I say to the government, uh, its performance on the procedures tonight have brought no credit to it, no credit to this parliament, and it really needs it really needs to consider the consequences of the way that it's behaved before this parliament, particularly given the context whereby 
I declared, as leader of the Labor Party, both publicly and in discussions with the government, that we were supportive of the drought fund. Under those circumstances, the government's behaviour is nothing less than bizarre. I thank the Leader of 